Hey guys, this is David Wunderlich, and with this video I want to show you what to expect from Vanderbilt's offense when they play the Florida Gators this weekend. Now, with modern spread offenses like Dan Mullins, the general philosophy is that you try to spread teams out sideline to sideline because that spreads the defense out and there will be fewer defenders near the ball at any given time. Vanderbilt also likes to minimize the number of defenders near the ball at any given time but they do it by doing the exact opposite thing. They like to try to draw as many defenders as possible into a single spot so that somebody else going to a different area will end up not having that many people around him. So I'm gonna start with a few examples of Vanderbilt doing just that. Here's a play that Vanderbilt is running against Notre Dame and they've got three tight ends in the game, two on this side and one over here. Notre Dame is countering by putting nine men in the box. They've got six guys right on the line of scrimmage plus three linebackers here. So Vanderbilt has consolidated nine of the 11 defenders in this little area right here. Because they've done that, if they can get somebody out to basically anywhere else besides that spot, then there's not gonna be very many defenders near him. And that is exactly what Vanderbilt does on this play. This is going to be a play action pass. So the quarterback will drop back, fake the handoff to the running back, and that is going to make sure that all of these guys stay close to the line of scrimmage because this looks like a heavy run set, Vanderbilt's going to do play action, it's going to look like a heavy run, and that means the two guys going out on a pattern are going to have single coverage. So what happens is this guy, the tight end on this edge, is just going to run a go route up the hash. The receiver down here is going to come up, and he's going to fake like he's going inside on a post. A post route is just one where a receiver runs out and then makes a slant towards the middle of the field like he's running at the goal post, hence post route. But he doesn't run a post. He comes out, fakes like he's doing a post, and then dives towards the sideline. This defender here is going to drop back and he's gonna play like he's defending the post and that gets him turned around and the receiver's wide open on his actual out. So if we watch this play go forward. Kyle Shermer, the quarterback, has offered the ball and all of these guys are coming up. This edge rusher is coming up. Everyone believes it's a run and now they're gonna get that single coverage that they wanted. And so now I'm gonna switch the camera angles here because you can see the routes a lot better from this one. We watch it go forward. Here the receivers come up, made his break. He is thinking this is a post. He is also going that way. The receiver cuts to the outside, and now there's no one around him as he's making the catch. Vanderbilt consolidated as many defenders as they could into the box, which meant that when they went vertical, they had single coverage, and all it took was a double move to get that receiver wide open. So that was how Vanderbilt gets somebody isolated on a pass. Here's how they get somebody isolated on a run. This is a two tight end set, one on this end, one on this end, and again, it's drawing a lot of defenders right here into the middle of the field. They're going to add jet sweep action here from the wide receiver, which makes this guy drop back, and the safety's going to rotate up this way to counteract that jet sweep. So if we watch this as we approach the snap, here he goes. This guy's rotating back. This guy's rotating over. This guy's momentum is going to the offense's right. We've got these three guys on the offense's right, and that means there's plenty of room over here on the left. This linebacker here is gonna stay at home and come over to the left, but the tight end over on this side does a really good job of getting around and sealing this edge, as well as pushing this guy upfield. And because he does that, this linebacker will get caught right about here in the traffic, and the running back is gonna have plenty of room to get out to the left. So here it is in real time, and you'll see how Vanderbilt gets most of the defenders to be right on the line of scrimmage, and if at all possible, to the right of the center, and that means when they run left, there's going to be hardly anyone over there. So this is something else that Vanderbilt does at times, which is send multiple guys to the middle of the field to create a lot of traffic there and hopefully confuse the defense. Here they're doing it against Notre Dame. The guy on the top is just going to clear out that way. The running back will come out on kind of a safety valve pattern over there, which leaves three other guys to watch. This one and these two over here. You can see this guy's shoulders are tilted a little bit, and I think he's doing that because he's going to do a shallow cross through the middle. The tight end on this side is going to come towards the middle and end up running up the hash marks. And this receiver on the outside will kind of shadow him for a bit, but stay in the middle shorter. And so what this does is with this shallow cross, this cross, and this guy going up the hash marks, you get three Vanderbilt eligible receivers right in the middle of the field at roughly the same time. So you watch this play start. You got cross, cross, and he's coming back. And so it's drawing defenders into this area of the field. So what's gonna happen is the tight end on his vertical is gonna get behind the defense and Kyle Schirmer's gonna hit him before he reaches the safety and he'll break a tackle and get a touchdown. So here you can see he came up 
and he's found a spot behind these two defenders in front of the safety. And he's a big dude, hard to bring down, and he gets the touchdown. You can see it better from the reverse angle. Tight end's going to come up this way. He's going to cross. The receiver on this side is going to cross. And the tight end is going to find himself in space. Vanderbilt did a similar trick against Georgia, but this time they're going to have four guys going towards the middle of the field at once instead of three. So to start, these two outside receivers here are going to do dueling shallow crosses. So he's going to come out and come across, and he'll go out a little bit deeper and go across. This receiver here is also going to start by going towards the middle of the field, but he ends up doing a vertical up the hash. This tight end over here is also going to come over to about the hash mark, but then he's going to turn around and head back the other way. And so between this route here and this shallow cross, Vanderbilt's going to end up having two levels of crossing routes on the right side. And then finally, the running back doesn't go to the middle of the field, but he does come out this way and go up the hash. And that's important because as he does that, this linebacker is going to come up and end up following him. And that's going to remove somebody from the play. So if we watch this play start, you can see here, these two guys are coming towards the middle of the field and these guys are coming towards the middle of the field. And it's gonna end up kind of confused. No one ends up covering this shallow cross coming this way, but George is bringing some heat from this way. 15 is also rushing. And so Kyle Shermer ends up rolling out to his right. And so even though this shallow cross ends up wide open with no one covering him, quarterback is going to his right and he can't see him. But it still works out for Vanderbilt because the other shallow crosser has gotten ahead of the safety over here. And Kyle Shermer makes a good throw on the run and he almost picks up the first down on third and 15. So here it is in real time. You'll see four guys kind of converging in the same area, creates a little bit of confusion, and both shallow crosses end up open. Kyle Shermer hits one of them and they get a nice big gain. Jay Hayes in the ball game as well. Shermer gonna roll to the right, throw on the run, and it's caught at the 21. Another trick that Vanderbilt likes to do is get guys open by stretching the field vertically more so than horizontally. So this is a pretty widespread formation. You've got somebody going from the near side numbers almost to the far side numbers. But this is more about spreading the field vertically. Three different guys do verticals. These guys on the outside will do verticals. This guy's just going to kind of do a five yard curl over here. But Vanderbilt is setting up a screen. And so because these guys are clearing out the defense, the defense is not going to have anybody over here for the running back. Georgia does have this defender coming up to defend against the screen, but he's going to miss the tackle. And when he does, there's nobody else in this area because this guy has come up leaving this area wide open. So that's them stretching the field to get a completion behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Vanderbilt stretching the field that ends up with a shorter completion. Both guys on the outside are going to run verticals and Vanderbilt's going to do play action and sneak the running back out this way on a wheel route. The key defender is right here. He's going to come up when he thinks it's a run, and as soon as he realizes it's a play fake, he is going to then cut in and try to get after the quarterback. But with all five guys on the line of scrimmage rushing upfield, and this guy clearing out, and this guy coming up for the quarterback, that's going to leave a pocket over here for the running back to get into. To start the play, all five guys are coming up. None of them have dropped back. He is running his clear out, and he is coming up this way. Forward a little more. The linebacker has noticed its play action. And so now he's coming this way to try to get after the quarterback. Shermer is looking for this sideline route deep on that side, but he does notice the linebacker coming in, and so he changes his mind and just hits the running back short. And because Vanderbilt has cleared out this area, again, there's a ton of space over here, and he's able to get a nice gain. So here it is in real time. Well, that was a terrific answer by the dogs. 75-yard bomb to elect. So that is Vanderbilt stretching the field vertically and ending up with a short completion past the line of scrimmage. And now finally, I'm going to show you how Vanderbilt stretches the field vertically to get an even longer completion. So these two receivers over here are going to end up going up the hashes. He's going to come over and go up the hash. He goes up the hash. So because those guys are doing verticals kind of up the middle of the field, that's going to draw defenders back with them. The tight end over here is going to come out and he's going to get up to about the 20 yard line and then just do a quick little in. And because the verticals have cleared out that space, he's going to be in one on one coverage. And Kyle Shermer just makes a perfect throw to him to pick up the first down. Shermer from the three will throw it. He rifles it down straight down the middle. Of so, how does one combat this Vanderbilt offense? The main way you do it is by attacking the offensive line. 
The offensive line has been a little beat up this year. They're not very good to begin with. And so it's possible to either just beat them off the ball or do things to confuse them. Here, Notre Dame does something that confuses them a little bit. Vanderbilt's offensive line is going to worry about pressure coming from the left. Now, the edge rusher does drop back, but both of these guys go towards that side. And when they do that, all four of these linemen here, the left tackle through the right guard, are all going to drop back towards that area. But Notre Dame ends up sending two guys on a blitz, and it's going to cause Kyle Schirmer to have to throw the ball sooner than he wanted to. So you can see here, four offensive linemen are only blocking two defenders, which means there's only one other offensive lineman here to deal with one, two, three defenders coming up the field. So this guy ends up getting in the quarterback's face, but any one of these guys could have done it. So now Shermer has to get rid of the ball. He hits that shallow cross, but it's well covered and they don't pick up the first down. Here's a play where Notre Dame brings extra guys. They've got five standing on the line of scrimmage. They're also going to bring this guy to make a sixth while this guy drops back. Now Vanderbilt is actually going to get one-on-one -on -one blocking across the board. The tackle will take this guy. The guard will get this guy. The second level blitzer will come in and the center will be on him. And then the two guys on the left get those two guys on the left. The guy standing up here in the middle of the line is going to delay a little bit before coming and the running back will pick him up. And so Vanderbilt is actually going to get a hat on a hat, even though Notre Dame is rushing six. The problem is this defensive end right here. He's simply going to beat the left guard in the gap between the left guard and left tackle, and he's going to come in and get a strip sack. Finally, here's a third down where Georgia does something interesting. They've got these guys over here. All three of them end up dropping back, and Georgia is going to rush this guy, this guy, the edge, and also this linebacker over here. The pressure is going to be coming from a direction that the offense wasn't exactly expecting. Again, though, they're going to have all of these guys accounted for, but Kyle Shermer is going to get happy feet in the pocket because he's not sure if his line can handle this unusual blitz, and he's going to end up making a bad throw. So here it is in real time, and really watch Kyle Shermer in the pocket. Watch his feet. He doesn't have them set, and when he throws it, it's way too high. Before he needs to line up, shotgun snap on third down, and... Eight. We'll throw it in. This Vanderbilt offense is fairly explosive. As you can see from those early parts of this video, they can get some big plays at times. However, they're very inefficient on a down-by-down -down basis in large part because their offensive line just isn't very good. So if Florida can do some creative things with blitzes and just win with some one-on-one -on -one matchups, they'll be able to stuff this Vanderbilt offense fairly well. If they're not able to get that pressure and not able to take advantage of this mediocre offensive line, Vanderbilt will pop some big plays and they'll be able to keep it close later into the game.